Republic instead. Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? The women with the least likelihood of getting pregnant are the ones most worried about having abortions. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting. So, it's not a right-wing conspiracy theory. It's not QAnon. It's real. <laughs> hey, folks. Welcome back to The Enemies List. I'm your host, Rick Wilson. Joining me today is my good friend, Vanity Fair special correspondent, frequent guest on MSNBC. You see her getting up bright and early as the as the as the rosy fingered streaks of dawn cross the sky to take a an Uber down to Thirty Rock almost almost every week now uh, on MSNBC and Morning Joe. It is my good friend Molly John Fast. Thank you for having me. Always fun. Always uh, always a pleasure. We're always, always better together, fun. as they say. Oh, always fun. That's right. It's true. Uh, you're the fan favorite on my podcast as well. I love that. So listen, um, I thought your article about Joe Biden and being boring was really one of the best things I've read this week, because in some weird way, I think what you, what you touched on is that, is that in some ways a boring campaign or a boring politician is this return to normalcy in this country tell us a little bit more about the piece what the argument is so people understand it uh and we'll put a link in the show notes to the to the article as well do you guys actually have show notes because on our podcast we we don't actually have show notes but we right we always i like to say that once in a while because it sounds perfect the fictitious it's funny because I went to this sleep boy camp called Bucks Rock and there was just an article about it in the Times. And there was this thing called the Fleen Shop that didn't really exist. And you would send people to the, you know, and so I feel like the show notes is this sort of second generation Fleen Shop. Um, so the idea here was that it was something I had noticed before. It was actually, it, you know, because all we do is politics, uh, any, t- you know, it, you find your brain thinking about so i got very stuck on tony ivers evers from wisconsin the governor who got reelected by the way getting reelected as a democrat in wisconsin is like pretty much a miracle right i mean that i spent a lot of mo- i spent a lot of time effort and money <laughs> with my team there last year and uh it it was a uh, to say it was an uphill climb is putting it very mildly and he won by a like 3.4 points, which for Wisconsin is a landslide. And he said when he got reelected, he said, uh, I won by being boring. Boring wins was the quote, boring wins. And I Mm -hmm. thought a lot about that because Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Ohio are like, you know, you know, Arizona. There are a few states that decide every presidential contest where we are now. And uh, so it it is, Wisconsin is like super important. But um, I also thought about that because the Biden administration is really interesting. The administration is, uh, they don't, they are not, they, you know, they're so effective. And I was thinking about it with the drug negotiation last week. They did this incredible Medicare drug negotiation again even just doing it is so unprecedented, right? Because the drug companies, and I say oh. this as someone who participated in a Pfizer trial, is quite friendly with the Pfizer people. Uh, the drug companies have such powerful lobbyists and such incredible no. amounts of money, and they have convinced you know the federal government that they are on the side of angels, which they're really not. You know, I mean, they certainly come up with some good stuff, and they saved our ass during the pandemic. So this negotiation is really one of the few times where the government is winning against the swamp, right? The lobbyists are pissed. This is what Mm -hmm. none of them want. And so it really felt like a victory. And the week before you had Biden at at Camp David with South, the head of the president of South Korea, president of Japan, sitting down in this like unprecedented bilateral meeting to talk about you know, how they can neutralize China. And that, again, humongous. <laughs> right. Like, and, and so, and, you know, I am reading about why DeSantis won't tour the hurricane with <laughs> right. Biden. So there is definitely a disconnect. You know, I, I, I was reading Franklin Foer's new book uh, about Biden. And 
and it struck me because it really does get back to that same story that you that we've always sort of known about Joe Biden way back to what it takes by Richard Ben Kramer. He legitimately is a middle class, a product of the American middle class. He he's not a right. giant brainiac. He's not, you know, he he's not a guy who's like deeply deeply immersed in every nut and bolt detail of the policy stuff. But he has good instincts and and, and weirdly, he set himself with a lot of these metrics, like things he wanted to accomplish. And, and I think that's what's so shocking about it is the normalcy of getting things done off of a list. It blows it blows people's minds like, wait, right. he said he was going to do prescription drugs. And he what did he he, he he did prescription drugs? It's like, you know, Trump talked about an infrastructure bill every single right. week for four goddamn years. Did we ever get an infrastructure <laughs> bill from Trump? No, we did not. It, right. No one. It was infrastructure week. It was always fucking infrastructure week. <laughs> it was week. always I mean, I do, week. right? I mean, it was just a joke, right? It was always infrastructure week. No, I mean, it, you know, and I think that there's an interesting thing that happens with the mainstream media. And again, we are the mainstream. I hate it when people criticize the mainstream media as members of the mainstream media. You and I are both members of the mainstream media. So, yep. but <clears throat> on the reporting side, you know, there's a sense that the Biden administration, I, I was talking to a friend about this and he said, aggressively boring that they use their boringness to mm -hmm. shut down stories which yeah. again I, I, the, I no argument for me i think it's a very smart thing to do but the problem is it, it's hard then when you want media attention correct to come and back it's to like you know you, you every day there's like some there, there's like that sort of pro forma kabuki dance of Peter Ducey asks a dickhead question and Karine Jean-Pierre kind of rolls her <laughs> eyes and then the, like grinds off into 15 points about whatever policy refutes his, his absurdity. And right. it's not the same kind of like running gun battle feeling that we used to have in, in the Trump era or, or frankly, you know, even, even in the, even in the Obama and Bush era, there was this, a weird sense that there, that both of those administrations were somehow very different I mean, and Trump's was just like an outlier yeah. in the weirdest possible world. But it is, yeah, I think that aggressively boring thing has has a piece of like comfortable psychology wired into it somehow that that I, I was, like I said, I was really impressed with the piece because it touched on something that I've been, I, I couldn't quite put my finger on, like like the procedural nature of the Biden administration. And it reminded me of a phrase that- right. um, Which is- Right. It's like procedures, huh? Rules, policies. How did that work? <clears throat> right. Andy Card, who was uh, W's chief of staff, one time said to me and a couple other people at a dinner, he says, you know, good White Houses leak on purpose. Bad White Houses just leak. And and it, it kind of tells you something about the Biden White House is that it's not really as leaky as uh, nothing was as leaky as the Trump White House. It's not but it's leaky not at this, all. It, and I think like, that's the complaint. Right. I think a lot of reporters... Right. I mean, I think that's the mainstream media complaint. I think a lot of reporters are kind of like... I think they take it out on them a little bit because there aren't a constant series yeah, of, oh, so-and-so is trying to kill so-and-so. Peter Navarro and Gary Cohn are dueling with pistols in the East Wing. You right. know, none of that's happening. And so there is that... Right that normalcy question there speaking of normalcy and i i just want to go flip from, from the normal biden white house world and i'm so grateful you turned me on to it yesterday because i i once i clicked on the link to the ken paxton hearings it's the best television on television it's amazing that it's shit amazing. is it's loco TV. i mean i mean it's <laughs> and and ken and the lawyer busby Ken yeah. Busby, not Ken Busby. No, uh, Tony Busby, to something like that, that. guy. Yeah. yeah, is as maroon as I have ever seen a human. He has tanned to the. I mean, and he's saying, you know, if a political con contribution, that line yesterday, if a political contribution right. counts as a bribe, then everyone in Austin would be in jail. <laughs> Which maybe they should be. I don't know. You Texas. know, I mean, you may have you a know, point there, so Busby. Very, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, mean, but doesn't that, that was like, some incredible? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I always say that like one party states are inherently become corrupt and ineffective. Yeah. And I mean that 
because I think Inherently. New York State's government yeah. is corrupt and ineffective. It's I a one party state. City. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 and, yeah. and Texas. So, I mean, isn't this just like the the level of corruption going on in this one is? I, it is so. It's be it's like teapot dome shit. It's like a Ron Contra shit. This thing is so beyond the pale, and the and the and the and the absolute like obviousness of the bribes that they're paying to people to try to keep them from you know serving in the Senate or trying to keep them from from supporting the impeachment. I I, I don't know how even normal people, even normal Republicans in Texas, can look at this and go, "Hey, this is a great idea." Yeah, I mean, this I, guy's a great idea. We should keep Ken. We need more. What we need is more Ken Paxton. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm telling you my favorite thing about the Ken Paxton impeachment trial. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, Christopher Hooks is covering it for Texas Monthly. He's yeah. a very smart Texas mm-hmm. writer and, you know, lives in yeah. Austin. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he's to- the guy's Tony Busby. Um and it's just Tony Busby, right, right? Right, Tony Busby, and it's just an incredible thing. I, I want to say, like, he is also being removed by uh, a conser- by conservative. T- I mean, this is not a liberal plot. Mm-hmm. No, this is definitely not. And, and that's one thing I'm starting to see in like the some of the the conservative coverage is like, you know, obviously Texas doesn't have enough MAGA representatives <laughs> right. and, and, or no, MAGA no. state senators, I'm like. What the hell do you goddamn <laughs> maniacs want? <laughs> because I mean, it's got everything. It's got adultery. It's got bribery. It's, it's got, got Uber it's got every to, flavor to of corruption. Las Vegas. It's got I Uber mean, rides to for, to his girlfriend's house. Yeah, uh, paid for by somebody else. By the way, that I mean, girlfriend. It, 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 it's going to eventually get to like bestiality and cannibalism uh, yes. at this point. It, it's inc- I do hope that it gets to cannibalism because you know, I mean, once it gets to cannibalism, no, I I do think it's pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, it does show Texas is in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it is a state that um, it is a state that has, a, has had a dominant Republican culture in the in the government for a very long time. And like my home state of Florida, it's yeah. super, super shady. It is run by lobbyists. It is run by it is run by, you know, uh, the corporate and special interest lobbyists at a, at a level. And look, I used to do a lot of that work. I used to be in that universe. And he's also been indicted multiple. Right. I just for two seconds, Ken Paxton is most famous for having been indicted seven times and still being right attorney agent. general, and, and 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 like the Texas bar. Yeah. Or, or you know, if you had a if you had a, a, a your slip and fall lawyer in El Paso who worked out of a strip mall who had been indicted <laughs> for something, the Texas bar would have yanked their law license. But Ken Paxton is still apparently attorney general. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I just it's it's madness. It's madness. So moving on from Texas, it's because I, I, I like I said, when you sent me that link yesterday, I was like, oh, God, I'm going to go. I'm not going in this rabbit hole. And then I was like, I'm in the rabbit hole. <laughs> it was it was kind of glorious. <laughs> it's amazing. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. Um. So my next topic is my is my recent obsession topic. Um. Look, I, I've long had the theory of the case that the Republican primary is a stupid kabuki dance that will end in misery, tears, and bankruptcy for many people. Um, but yeah, I think that's right. you know, uh, and, and Trump is the almost certain nominee. There is a weird thing going on right now, as yes. it becomes clearer and clearer to a lot of mainstream reporters that this is going to be the case, uh, and that the horse race they desperately want isn't isn't ever going to really happen. Um, I'm noticing a lot more yeah. of them, you know, suddenly doom spiraling on, oh, the polls are tied, the polls are tied. And they are. And it's not great yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're tied. Yeah, what do you think well. it says about where we are politically that you've got 91 charges, four felony indictments, by, uh, you know, against the leader of the attempted revolution versus the boring guy <laughs> who is, you know, Who's who's created a record number of jobs? Re- did, did the first managed to get the first real increase in wages in our lifetimes, basically since the '60s. Right. Um, right. Right. What do you think it says about the country? Because so, I, this is my uh, my I ponder this all the time. Like, where's the disconnect? How do you fix that that weird break point between reality and and a tie ball game? So what I would say 
about these first of all i think all the polls are bullshit and i i really do mm. and I, I feel like we spend much. you know you can I, I can get and again i'm not a pollster and i have pollsters who i love who are in my life like john de la volpe sure and, but i think that right yep. now the methodology is so i can i curse incredibly fucked you didn't even yeah, say course. yes but i kept going anyway uh is so incredibly fucked and the questions they're such leading questions and the pollsters and again republicans have really since 2020 uh maybe even a little earlier 2018 that midterm have been flooding the field with junky right. resputin polls resp Putin, Respu Rasputin, absolutely. Uh, Paul Rasputin. Rasputin, but I meant Rasputin because really, I think it's quite, Rasputin, Rasmussen, quite, same quite, diff. Quite the double entendre, but uh, I think that that crew has been flooding the field with junkie polls. There are a lot of right leaning polls. I mean, I, I think of like my favorite polling. Oh sure experience from 2022 we have this guy on the podcast he's running against lauren bopert everyone says he doesn't have a shot in hell i don't know why you're wasting your time i say yeah. well you know it's a very split district veil vale is not an r plus 21 i said veil vale is pretty tight no veil vale oh, no. is not rifle <laughs> right oh no he's losing he's losing we have him on he loses by 730 points to lauren bopert that is why polling is bullshit. And and maybe it's not always true, but do I believe that Joe Biden and Donald Trump tomorrow would be tied? No. And that's why I think no labels is, and neither does no labels, which is why they're working so hard to get right. ballot access on all 50 states. And by the way, this whole case against Biden it, for being too old is because Republicans know the power of incumbency. And they know that if Joe Biden is running against Donald Trump and all things are equal, he is going to kick his ass. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I think that there's a I think there's a meaningful uh, chance that when we get into the actual moment of realization for voters where there's a real head to head uh, and voters say, oh, shit, um, I, I think two things you mentioned, first off. The fact that no labels is on the ballot in Wisconsin, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada, Minnesota, New Hampshire, Maine, right. Colorado, Virginia, Oregon, and New Mexico, um, those are all places Biden has to win. You notice they're not out trying to get on the ballot right. in, in red states, even where it's easy. Isn't that weird? Huh. Right. huh. It's Strange. Odd. But yeah. um, but no, no but, labels is, a, is really scary. It's pernicious. It's really something. Um, but, but I think that there's a weird moment here that we haven't seen yet where, where people finally, and look, a lot of my, a lot of my liberal friends, a lot of my democratic friends are like, Oh no, the trial is going to take Trump out. He's going to be in prison. I'm like, why are you betting on miracles? No, with he's this not guy? Be Have we ever had a moment where a goddamn it's... miracle occurred with Donald Trump? No. And, and so no, and, I think there will also, be a moment where people. Then... Yeah. And of course not. I mean, that, 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 this is the thing that like drives me crazy about the resistance lately. It's like, it's like, oh, Trump will be in prison. No, he will not. He ain't gonna be in prison. No, he, Joyce look, he Vance, may get sentenced for something Joyce eventually. Vance said this. Yeah. Right, but he's not going to prison. Yeah. The timing is not such. I mean, even if he gets, even if he gets seen in this Georgia case, you know, if this Georgia case. Even if it right. runs as fast as a case is ever, it's not happening. He's going to kick no. the cannon, and that Florida case is a MAGA judge. I mean, it's and, a and MAGA judge it's in a MAGA actually, area. Right. Right. I mean, I, do, go ahead, go ahead, I really you, think yeah. that. Yeah, sorry, go on. Um, look, I, I think I, I still have a theory of the case, though, that nobody's grappled yet that it really is Biden versus Trump. I still think there are too many people. And look, I get it. A lot of people in the media would love, they want to do it as the traditional thing of follow the money, follow the balls, follow the back and forth craziness of, of, um, of the, of the, uh, of the primary race on the Republican of side. An open primary field. Right. For nothing, for nothing. It's, it's for nothing. But, but I think yeah. people will realize at well, some point, it's going to be like, oh, it really is these two guys. Love it or hate it. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, and I don't um, think people love it, but it doesn't matter. You know, it's not, this is not, I mean, this is what we have. The Republican base has hardened into a cult. They are in a death yep. spiral with their guy. Republicans don't like it, but they can't do anything. And, you know, Biden is there. He is president. He is doing a lot of stuff. You may not love him, but he beat Trump before. You know, he's three yep. years older than Trump. Does he look older? I don't fucking know. I mean, that's like, he's thinner. Uh, uh, he doesn't have an implanted wig. I right. mean, I don't know. I, you know. Right. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't need um, Dr. Feelgood to lie about his weight, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, um, I don't, you know. Yeah, it, it really is. Much, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I know some, I, I, a guy who's one of my political mentors is 82 now sharp as a tack never never misses a beat you know can he can he get up and run 30 miles no of course not he's 82 freaking years old but but he's still sharp and alert mentally and 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 i just i i find it amazing that these people who still believe that donald trump has a like, like abs and is this specimen of physical perfection and health it amazes me so um, now, moving on to another question. Yeah, I and I mean, I also, you know, you and I. Yeah, go on. You go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go. No, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I was just going to um, say, I mean, the whole conversation, I just think that there's, there's again, I don't want to be paranoid, but it strikes me that there are junky polls asking people if Biden is too yeah. old and then telling them that Trump is not. And so we're getting a lot of polling where people are saying, Biden is too old, but Trump is not. And it rem and again, I'm old enough to remember 2019 when they were like, Biden is demented. And then he'd come right. out and he'd be pretty good. And you'd think maybe Biden is a gifted orator, which he's not. But, you know, you had the expectations were so But they much set the bar so him. low. They set the bar so low. They turn uh, Biden is drooling into his them. into his oatmeal every morning. And then when right. he comes out. In the debates, particularly, and whips Trump around the stage a couple of times, people are like, "Wait, what?" So yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. Look, it, it, it age comes for us all. As a guy who's about to turn sixty this year, I get it, but, but uh, you know, I still think that's like the weirdest bad argument against Biden, and it's unfortunately an argument that a lot of the mainstream media spends a lot of time talking about, like a lot of a lot well, of time. I also think and I got a reprimanded lot of by anxiety. Yeah. There's a lot of anxiety about uh, seeming too partisan, seeming too lefty, right? You spend right. all this time attacking Trump. You have Trump derangement syndrome. And now here you are pumping up this guy who can barely write his own name. I mean, I, you know, and it's like, no, clearly he can write his own name. Yeah. Look, again, he is, he is. I can remember when Trump can't hold a bottle of water. Or walk down a ramp. There we go. I mean, right. hold on. <laughs> That's right. That's you know, right. He's a he's a guy who he's a guy who like stares into the sun during a goddamn eclipse. He is not. It was, was one of his better moments. You know. <laughs> so, um, so I want to change tracks just for a minute, Molly. Um, yeah. And, and you know, you and I, like many people, met on Twitter years and years ago in the before times, and right. it was the sort of it was a, it was a much different community then, and you know I, I I've noticed a migration of, of what I call the nice people, right. fewer Nazis. Yeah, I like I like an environment with 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 a lower Nazi count than a higher Nazi count. <laughs> right. Um, but but it, it's weird that 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 Twitter has, I mean, with Elon right now and fighting with the ADL. And the, and the sort of Nazis marching in the streets of Florida and elsewhere again. Are we having a Nazi moment? Or is there is this like is this like hot Nazi hot Nazi fall or something? Because they seem like they're they're absolutely goddamn emboldened to be out there in public. And and and, and you know the the ones on the ones on Twitter are are getting likes and likes and 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 boosting from the from the right. platform now. I mean, I, I just I, I wanted to, to just ask you about it because I know this is a subject that you you and I have talked about a lot before. But it's like, where do you see Twitter playing the, the, its role in 
2024 differently than it did in 20 or 16. Um, and, and what's up with the Nazis? <laughs> what's up with the Nazis? Um, no, it's bad. I mean, I, I'm going to come out here with a hot take that Nazis are bad. And really? <laughs> that they, are, they should okay. not be platformed. Uh, look, Elon Musk bought Twitter. He is anti, I mean, let's, let's like stop beating around the bush here. He's anti-vax. All his besties on Twitter are people who are in the far right. And he, yeah. again, uh, just for a minute, he's taking Monjaro or Wavy, one of those, I mean, right. one of those, yeah. uh, diabetes yeah. drugs for weight loss. But he doesn't believe yeah. in vaccines, right? Like, I feel like right. the vaccines, right. billions of people have had the vaccine, but, but the weight loss drug. Okay. And I don't know about so, you. I don't know about you. And believe me, as tempted as I am by it, I've right. had a number of friends who are like, I had to get off that shit because it was making me a crazy person. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I haven't taken it, but I think that it would make me quite sick. Um, but yeah, so this is a great, uh, it's a great, example of you know he interacts mostly with people from the far right he uh a lot of his hot takes are pretty right wing pretty intense very anti yeah. you know now he's fighting you know i i mean i don't know it's like i think of i think of desantis you know fighting with people about the merits of slavery like you never should be in this fight, right? right? Like slavery yeah. never good. Don't even like anti-Semitism. Yeah, always bad. You know. Yeah, nothing. Nothing about nothing about slavery was good. Nothing. Good. Right. What about their dancing and, by the fire at night? No. Right. Stop it. No. And what right. about the valuable? Like, no. No. And it's like the Holocaust. You know, the Holocaust never good. No good stuff came out of the Holocaust. So. I think these guys, right. when you find yourself having important conversations about slavery or the Holocaust like that, you probably need to sit the fuck down. And uh, and again, I don't know. Elon's losing lots and lots of money. Maybe he gets sick of it. I, I, I don't know. But it is a little bit scary that he owns this huge social media company and he owns a percentage of the large percentage of the satellites uh, in the sky. That seems it's bad. a lot. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. They mean the most like valuable satellite company in America or in the world right now is Starlink, and um, so it's it controls that, and, and apparently he likes some... to monitor it privately. Oh, so, I would hope. Well, listen, as always, Molly, uh, uh, we just went around the bend on like twenty-seven different things as we always end up doing. Um, you know, and Molly, the other day somebody asked me, like, like, you and Molly should go on tour together. We should do that. <laughs> Let's if go on tour. To we'll go cause on trouble. Tour. Yes. Text, yeah, if you guys uh, want to go, text, want us to go on tour, let us know because we'll send we'll do it. Rick, lots of messages. He loves. Don't threaten us with a good time. Advice. <laughs> yeah, uh, he is very into it, and we'll sell merchandise and torture you. Guys. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and and, and there'll be yeah. stage diving and all sorts of things. It'll be an amazing experience. <laughs> stage diving. People love stage. That's right. There's nothing middle who, who doesn't more than a mosh diving. pit. That's right. Because just in the evening, just if someone doesn't his... get injured. Right. That's uh, right. Damn it. The pyros. Uh, anyway. That's... Well, Molly, thank you again for coming on the show today. As always, I appreciate you, my friend. And uh, we will talk to you again very soon. Thanks, Rick. <laughs>